Morning everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. I am going to pull off this little engine which now runs very nicely and put it on the DC generator. Uh, it's not a high priority right now but winter is coming and with winter we will need uh, some DC power to charge the batteries on cloudy days and we've been to tractor supply and I got some heavier duty hardware and I'm going to put the 11 horse engine on the log splitter today and hope it fits and lines up well if not it'll mean another trip into town which I do not desire and Hopefully everything will be nice and work out well here. But there's a the little guy. He's really light. He's really light in comparison to the 11 horse. So now I also have to check the bolt pattern for the 11 horse. So we got some heavier hardware and I've got bigger washers and I've got lock washers and thicker bolts because that's a big engine and then I'm hoping to get this lined up properly on that engine and Chris in the meantime meanwhile is uh, gonna take off that other tire and our goal is to get we have to go to town today our goal is to get the tires swapped out we have new tires but they're on old rims which don't fit this and so what we have to do is put uh, get the tires put on the other rims and I'm not capable of doing that out here off the grid I don't have the tools or the capability to do that here so um, we're gonna have to take it in Chris is working on the tire right now while I'm working on the engine behind you I'm taking the behemoth engine off the old mount which is not going to be fun because this is so heavy yeah show you guys a cool um it's called flip sockets but for changing tires you'll see them at a lot of tire shops have them and it has um sockets on each end so all you gotta do is whatever size you need pop it on Pop it up, switch it, and you got a different size. These things save a lot of time. You have that PB blaster on you? Yep, right here. You get that, please. Yeah, this Thank stuff's you. like the best penetrating oil ever. Yeah, I'm starting to believe in it. It works. Thanks. Hopefully, if I'm lucky, this is the same size. Bolts on this. Watch over the mains, he's good. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, nope, it's a half inch. Yeah, now you get to see us both. I'm sitting here trying to get this engine off this uh, platform here. I don't want to spill any 
fluids. Now that I got this running. Oh, I hope this breaks free nice. Oh, good, 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 good. Always good when you break free nicely. spill any fluids inside this engine after getting it all cleaned up nice running so I don't want to tip it too far okay. oh. yeah PB blaster is amazing who knows how many years this stuff was on here and it's coming right off How's it looking over there, Chris? Off. You got it off? Yep. Okay. If you could please take them over to the truck. Okay, no problem. Put them in the bed of the truck, we'll take them into town. side over here please out of the runway yeah I was gonna play up high where can't trip over that's fine right there no over here Chris I don't want it up high right there where your feet are thank you yeah that's good thank you okay. two more alright guys well I'm just gonna finish this Chris if you could shut off the camera please yeah that's fine I've marked the holes here where the engine goes with a screw, believe it or not. I had to push a screw through. The uh, slots was the only thing I could get through there. To mark where the uh, engine mounting holes go. See if I can find a bigger bit, maybe even a hole drill. I'm gonna make those holes bigger. Hey guys, I have drilled the the holes in the wood, and I tried to make enough tension to. Uh, On, to tighten that belt. So what I did is I drilled holes and drilled slats in the wood. Now I've got, I had to go back to town and get new bolts because the bolts I got, I was calculating for that tiny little engine with that super thin base plate. Well, that was wrong. This big boy has a thick one inch base plate. So my screws were an inch off.
My bolts were an inch off. So this will be running today. That'll be running in a couple minutes as soon as I get the uh, bolts tightened. Oh, that's right, I gotta put a ground on somewhere. Tighten that down. Still tension on the belt. Got to make sure I still have tension on the belt after cranking on it because I uh, thought I heard a crash in the woods. Seems odd. Could have been a tree. I noticed before I accidentally had loosened up the the belt while tightening the bolts. This engine looks more fitting for this big machine anyway. I think this one is overpowered. I think a five horse would have done the job just fine, to be honest, because the uh, three horse was split in logs. So I'd be curious to see what this will do. It'll be interesting. Can't fit the ratchet driver in there. And I can't fit the wrench in there. give you a little enough room to get a wrench on that base so today I took Melanie into town it was payday and we did our shopping and I had to get my stuff I had to get my hardware and stuff and Melanie had to get her things so we're going for a little while today last bolt on and we can hook up some electrical and see if this thing will run. Alright. Well make sure we have tension. Looks good. Shouldn't spin. One way to find out, eh? We're gonna try this. I want to put the fuel filter up higher. I want to redo this uh, the gas line because the fuel filter might hit the belt. So, be back in a few minutes. I have to re reposition that for safety. Hey guys, I also ordered a filter yesterday, and that came in today. We can put that in.
think there's an up or down one. Oh, nice snug fit. Really nice. All right, and that goes through there. Nice and neat, centered. Nice clean filter. Believe it or not, I got the filter at Napa, Napa Auto. I did not know that they carried uh, small engine parts. Chris told me that you can get them there. Otherwise, I would have never known. And that's what we did. Nobody else had them. The small engine shop was closed for the day, for whatever reason. And uh, the tractor supply didn't have that particular one. Neither did the uh, hardware store, so I ended up getting them at the car shop. Whatever. It works. So I'm going to close my toolbox this time, because last time I blew up a lot of dirt on it, and that wasn't pretty. Now this should start and run, although I got no wheels on the thing. Stable? Yeah. I'm going to try splitting a couple lugs and see what happens. Maybe my ground isn't good enough. Plus, minus. I'm not getting power. I don't think my ground is good. Uh, I need a good ground. Well, that's supposed to be ground.
Well guys, it's definitely splitting uh, better. It's definitely got more power. Uh, it's actually sort of scary because when it splits those logs, they pop. Chris, you heard it over by the oh, chickens, yeah. right? When it splits those logs, you hear a loud snap when they break free. So it's definitely got some serious power now. Um, I'm still struggling with the really big rounds, but as Chris pointed out, this is this blade has probably never been sharpened, so we'll uh, we'll try sharpening the cutting blade, and that might help a lot on the big rounds because uh, it's really dull, and all we're doing is trying to mash in a dull blade into a piece of wood. So we'll do that and then uh, try it again. But definitely, it's got serious power. It snaps those logs. Yeah. Now, what I was showing you, at one point I was holding up the string. It. Chris, can you grab right behind you? There's probably a couple stringy ones that I couldn't get apart. Um, that one is a good example. This is why, guys, you have to use an axe to split them. Even if you're using a splitting mall, they're, they're stringy. And these strands don't pull apart very easy. All right? You've got to rip them apart. See that? Don't, don't hit your foot, but yeah, see, that's a problem, and uh, that's why I was following up with it. Grab that other piece, please, right there, standing up, right by the wagon. That one was worse, I think. Yeah, look at that one. Show the strands inside there, and that, that guys, is why um, it's sometimes easier to split it with an axe inside after you've split it with uh, the log splitter, because those strands just are sometimes really tough. Can you pull that apart? I know you're not as not don't have a lot of strength but yeah see that's that's a problem and that's easier to hit with an axe right Chris yeah a lot easier so that's what we're dealing with guys it's just stringy so really I always did it yeah you had to deal with it of course yeah it's just really stringy wood and that just wraps around your cutting blade and just makes a mess and so uh, there's just it is how it is anyway I will talk to you guys later the machine runs